You've gathered the evidence. You're forming opinions. Now, the final output of your audit is a report that you give to upper management or whoever basically hired you to audit so that they can figure out what to do. You're going to give them recommendations. So as we're preparing to do our post-audit control evaluation, we are going to review the evidence. We're trying to verify if the controls, the policies, procedures, technical, whatever, software, hardware, physical, environmental, whatever they put in place, are functioning. Are they effective? Are they meeting business objectives? I mean, that's really the bottom line. Do they have controls, and are they meeting business objectives, and are they being implemented effectively or properly, or are they just not meeting the objectives? And we report on these strengths and the weaknesses. Now, a report can be just a few pages, or it can be hundreds of pages. It really depends upon what you were auditing and the depth to which you're expected to report. But they all have some commonalities. They'll all have some kind of introduction with an executive summary. They'll have the findings. They'll have conclusions. They'll have determinations. And then they'll have detailed lists. Let's actually go take a look at some sample reports, just so we can kind of see them for ourselves here. This is the Global Information Assurance and we'll take a look at this one here. This example, this is a, an example certification paper. And so we can see this is actually a sample of a very specific audit. And we can see that um, there's a table of contents. It has an executive summary. This is what we did. This is what the potential vulnerabilities were. These are our recommended actions short-term, medium-term, long-term. Then we specifically looked at physical security, network security. We looked at disaster recovery and backup. So we specifically looked at these administrative procedures, use of root privilege or admin privilege, um, and how that was secured. And so then we can see all of the details. And when we go farther, we can see that there were appendices on um, here were the objectives for the controls and the audit guidelines. Here were uh, some printer vulnerabilities we were looking at. This next one was um, writable files, exceptions, additional file recommendations. So then it goes through, and here's our executive summary. We did this at this date. We were looking for these specific things. We had these specific objectives. Um, we were looking at formal and non-formal security procedures and policies and uh, to ensure that contractors, employees, visitors all adhered to the specified policy. We were looking at physical security, network security, and security in individual servers. And uh, there's a little bit of uh, background there. Our procedure was outlined in Appendix A. We used, um, based on our scope of objectives, and we also used some network scanning tools. We saw these particular potential vulnerabilities, and we have these recommended actions. And so then the rest of this goes through exactly what they did, how they did it, and in detail. And they will even have some diagrams, a network diagram, and going further on describing the, they have a description of um, their uh, perimeter hosts and the scanner that they used and what they scanned and, and what they were looking at. So here is an example of a very specific report. Here's another example produced by a different organization. And it's written maybe a little more formally, the Customer Information Security Audit Report. We're going to scroll down a little bit here. So we can see the acknowledgments here, who are the authors and the reviewers and the publisher. Let's go down a little bit farther, take a look at the executive summary. We see here the table of contents. It starts with the executive summary, which is what it should have, showing the core assets and the risks. Remember how we talked about we're identifying what it is we're protecting and what are the risks to that. Also, what is management's knowledge and awareness? Because remember, if we don't have support from the very top, this just isn't going to work. And also, a summary of the primary security threats. Remember how we talked about identifying once you know what you're protecting and the risks, well then, what is the threat level with those various risks? And then we have compiled recommendations the scope of how much we audited, the methodology that we used, 
and how we scored the risk and then um, our whole approach and then the findings about specific things. So we have findings about the current security policy, how the information security department was organized, how they're managing assets, how they're doing HR security, basically what are they doing, are they training people, what security awareness are they giving folks, it's physical and environmental security, communications and operations management, access control, um, information system acquisition, development and maintenance. Okay, so did you write some programs? How did you buy these things? How did you evaluate them? How did you um, put them into production? How did you maintain them? And how did you manage security incidents and business continuity? And what is your compliance level? So this particular report is um, a lot more formal, a lot more formally structured, and it has all the elements that we talked about earlier. This is your deliverable, folks. This is the end thing that you're trying to produce. But ultimately, what you're really trying to do is give management something to act on. And you're working with management, and you're working with the teams, and you're working with them so that they can do business the best possible way. And that's really your job, not to just go barging in and saying, you're doing something wrong. You're there to help them. And you need to make sure they understand that. Now, very often, it is the case that upper management, they're trying to hide something, or they don't believe, or they've hired you to prove something that isn't true. I mean, that happens all the time. And your professionalism is, is required when, when dealing with that kind of thing. And it's not for you to make judgments except to come to conclusions based on what you find. And um, then it's, it's really totally up to that management, your, your client, to do something about it. However, you might also be expected to come back in three months, six months, one year, whatever, to see are they in compliance. You, you might have been hired by someone to go and double check, go back in six months and see if those department managers have implemented what you recommend. So our audit report is going to have those things, the introduction with the summary, the findings, the conclusions, what we determined, and the detailed findings as well. In our documentation, of course, we developed the documentation at the end, but that was based on how we started this whole thing, our whole planning. And everything that uh, we do is supported by and supports the evidence and conclusions made in the report. We, we have to support with evidence what our conclusions are. And the documentation, of course, should be stored safely. You shouldn't just be lying it around, having it lie around. It should be locked up. It should be delivered carefully. Very often, you'll deliver a printed copy, not an electronic copy, and it's the only, only one, or, or whatever else is, is stored very safely and securely. So the components of the audit documentation, as we talked about, what was our strategy? What did we, what we, did we do? Um, and what was our planning? Uh, we'll have our observations and our notes, and how did we do this? Were there any laws and regulations involved? What were the activities we did, and what did we find? Did we use any external services? What are our follow-up activities? And conclusions and recommendations all finally put into this report that we hand whoever hired us, basically, upper management. Once we're done with the audit, our post-audit tasks, we have the assessment of the findings, we talk with management, we show it to them, Here's our review, and we have our exit interview. And we may, of course, have some provision to come back as well. When you report, you got to realize that they're not necessarily going to want to hear what you have to say. Or they hired you to say something that isn't true. That, that happens a lot. When you are sharing the reports, here's where you got to have your most tactful people work with people. Sometimes you have to kind of negotiate with them to get them to be willing to accept the bad news. Um, you know, the old saying, you can catch more flies with honey than vinegar, you know. So it, it takes tact. It takes professional courtesy. Um, you realize that this is the part they don't want to hear, that they're, the part that they were hoping would be something different. Sometimes you have to kind of negotiate with them 
to get them to understand um, and you have to work with them. Sometimes you're facilitating um, between uh, management and the department and you're helping management and the department come to an understanding on how to improve process and you're the facilitator. Sometimes you're just plain old doing conf conflict resolution. So this is where it takes a lot of people skills and a lot of professionalism. So just realize that if you're the project manager planning this, you're going to take your most senior, your most people-oriented person and um, to basically deliver the results. Now, the folks who are going to get your report, they're going to be the senior management who hired you, the key stakeholders, the board of directors, uh, whoever, the, uh, your own audit management, um, the audit committee members, the folks who first wrote up the charter and the engagement letter, probably comprised of board members and um, whatever managers manage the whole audit activity. Those are going to be the recipients of your audit report. It is ultimately up to them to do something about your findings. Now you may indeed have follow-ups. You may have to come and see if corrective actions were taken based on your recommendations and probably you will be involved in follow-up. Now how to communicate the issues and the risks and the results? Obviously you need to be able to present all the evidence and the findings in a um, sort of even, non-judgmental, just straight facts, this is what we found, professional sort of manner. And that means you need to be very clear on all the evidence and the findings. You have your detailed report. You, um, if necessary, there are any post-audit tasks, so you conduct a findings assessment, a findings review, your exit interview, which we talked about earlier. You communicate the results to the individuals specified in the audit charter, because it should say up front who's going to receive these results, and possibly develop your follow-up program. The last thing we're going to look at in this lesson is how we can help empower the folks we've audited to improve their own process without just simply coming in like a policeman or something and saying, you did these things. We're going to talk about control self-assessment.